Ciao. Sour Banane family, we see you, we honor you, and we value you. Your gifts, along with God's grace, allow us to persevere, to mentor, and prepare new leaders as we co-create for future generations. The Proctor Conference is where future meets legacy. We are committed to the forward crusade of faith, equity, and reparatory justice, nationally and globally. We are the place where Ubuntu becomes reality. Your gifts to the Legacy Campaign enables our success, our sustainability, and secures the future. With vision, by faith, and through action, we are the Proctor Conference. I'm so grateful that there is in this world something called the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. You've been on the wall doing the work. Sister Iva Carruthers and so many others, you represent the best of our faith. You represent the faith of the black church, the conscience of the American churches. Thank you for the work that you do. Family, the time has come to work the roots. The roots of Sam DeWitt Proctor, Gardner C. Taylor, Pauli Murray, Bayard Rustin, and the list continues. As the mission of the Sam DeWitt Proctor Conference continues to shape our ethos and worldview. Join us today by committing an annual, one-time or recurring gift to the SDPC Legacy Campaign. We pray that you and your loved ones have been and will remain the benefactors of God's grace and mercy. Thank you. Good morning and welcome to the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference service of weekly prayer and song, the Proctor Pride Prayer Dimmick. We are so thankful to have you with us this fourth Friday of Pride Month. We have been celebrating all month long. Whether you are on Facebook, on YouTube, or any other social media outlet, we are so thankful you're with us this morning for prayer. We would like to invite you to visit our website, sdpconference.info, and we'd also like you to receive text message updates from the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference, and you can sign up by texting SDPC to the number 84576. And if you know anyone who does not have access to the internet, please let them know that they can listen to this service today at noon and 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time by dialing the number 909-318-7011. We just ask that you please silence your phones when you're calling in to listen to the prayer call. Thank you so much. And now to our host this morning, Reverend Dr. Lisette Cross. Good morning, and thank you so much, Tiana. It is a joy and pleasure to be your host this morning. Welcome, Sabu Nani. We see you, we honor you, we value you. You are important to us. And namaste, the divine in me sees the divine in you as we celebrate Proctor Pride Prayer Demic 2022 uh, 3.0, so to speak. And so we are forever indebted to the founders of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference, Reverend Dr. Jeremiah A. Wright Jr., Reverend Dr. Frederick D. Haynes III, Dr. Iva Carruthers, for their vision, their faith through courage. Let us gather ourselves as I introduce our call to worship and share who will be bringing us our prayer reflections and ministering, uh, ministering to us in song this morning. Beloved, the Holy One gathers us together with purpose to dream of futures yet imagine, to bolster our courage before powers and principalities to nurture our love for one another. God's blessing is upon us as we come to wrestle, wrestle with meaning and justice, with questions of love, with the calling upon our lives 
for we know that the spirit is moving for God has told us what is good and what God requires. And that is to do justice, to love kindness and to walk humbly with our God. Let us worship together. It is my joy to introduce our prayer warrior for this morning. Danielle Dufault has spent the last 20 years helping her community, the transgender community, live longer, healthier lives. Her work is deeply rooted in her faith that affirms the love of God for all people. A survivor of childhood abuse and domestic violence, Reverend Dufault is a consummate advocate for all who are marginalized and oppressed. She understands the work of justice and mercy to be that of every Christian. Her guiding light is based on Micah 6, 8. She is a preacher, teacher, motivational speaker, and dedicated abolitionist. Danielle Dufault is a native of New Jersey, and today she makes her home in picturesque Cape May, New Jersey. She's a very proud graduate of Howard University School of Divinity. Our minister of music this morning is no stranger to the Proctor family. Reverend Ken Austin Jr. is a pastor, singer, performer par excellence, having shared his vocal range with audiences near and wide. We know that Reverend Austin has experienced hurt, joy, sadness, and accomplishments ultimately believing that God will get the glory through it all. We welcome him back as our minister of music. It is totally and completely my joy and pleasure to welcome them as they come. We will first hear from our minister of music. The next voice will be Reverend Danielle Dufault, who will bring us a prayer reflection from God, God's self, followed by Ken. Uh, with music selection in that order. Good morning, it's my distinct pleasure to be here today. I just wanted to wake up this morning and when I, as I got up this morning, I thought to myself, what do I want to minister? And the first thing that came to my mind was I said, I love the Lord. You heard my cry and pitied every groan. So I'll say, I love, the Lord, he heard my cry and pity every groan long as I live. And troubles roll, I'll hasten to his throne. Oh, I love. and pitied every girl oh, oh, long as I live and troubles rise I'll hasten to
Praise God from whom all blessings flow. It is a distinct pleasure to join you once again this morning, Proctor family. I am um, filled with gratitude that uh, you would ask me to join you again and specifically to join you on this uh, day when we celebrate pride. I was thinking about um, what I would uh, pray about and um, in my reflections, I was thinking about how the world has once again began to waken up from the global pandemic of COVID-19. Even as we begin to celebrate uh, things like pride again, and I was thinking about how some people are, uh, some of our friends are no longer with us anymore. Some of those who were once very vibrant in the LGBT community, some of my friends who are, who were not even uh, in their 40s and, and in their 30s um, are no longer with us. And I was remembering them. And um, even the ones who are still here today having a rough go at it. And I was thinking about what pride means to all of us. And I was thinking about God, one of God's greatest commandments, to love one another. With all those things in mind, I was also reminded about Proctor's call, uh, the Proctor family's call to love one another and how they have continuously filled that call, fulfilled that call, and how grateful I am for the Proctor family. So with all of that in mind, let us go before the throne of grace. Thank you. Most gracious God, the one who knew us before each of us were born, we thank you for this day, this day in which new mercies are afforded to us, one we've never seen before and one we will never see again. We, we give thanks for you, God, and all that you have afforded to us and for the provisions you have allowed us to enjoy today. We thank you for Proctor and all that they have worked to, to offer us um, in these times and days. And I, I personally thank you for their boldness. Um, and I'm asking that we have a moment of restoration where families, particularly black and brown families will come together once again, where mothers will go to their sons and fathers will go to their daughters and say, all is well, come home, come home now. No more separation because of who you are and um, who, who you know yourself to be, who you li live um, same gender loving, those who are same gender loving, those who choose to live their lives authentically, come home now. No more separation, that we would live the way you, would, you have called us to live, that we would live out the greatest commandment, one of the greatest commandments you've called us to do, which is to love one another. We thank you for that, God. And we thank you for the boldness to do that in what Jesus called us all to do. Um, I thank you for, um, mm, mm, the grace, the grace that is uh, afforded to us as believers and uh, the new mercies and um, mm, mm, mm. Oh, mm. And I thank you for all of these things. I thank you for Dr. Jeremiah Wright and I thank you for Dr. Ida Carruthers and um, Dr. Jerry, I mean, I'm sorry. Mm. And I thank you for all of these things. I, as we continue to work throughout the, the pandemic and the, the Pride Month, mm, I'm so sorry, but uh, in grace, thank you, Sierra, and in grace. I, I, I was thinking of all these things and I'm sorry, things have just overcome me and mm. And I'm so grateful. I am very grateful that uh, we are approaching a time in our lives where greater acceptance has come to us all. And that as I, uh, as I think about the, those who have, we have lost and those who I mourn, I'm thinking about how restoration is coming to black and brown families and the church, those who have been shut out of the church 
And now is the time where we welcome that back in. I'm thinking about how grateful I am for Dr. Jeremiah Wright and the work he did and my mentors like um, the Wileys who welcome LGBT folks into the church long ago when it wasn't popular and people were very unkind to them. I'm thinking of those people and the great courage that they stood on and that they had to have. Those are the things I'm thinking about and the costs they paid, but they did what they needed to do and they knew it was right. The restoration of coming back, coming back to church. And I say to our LGBT folks, if you were hurt and you were wounded, come back. Come back, find your place. It is okay. I'm sorry you were wounded. I heard stories about people who were talked about and shamed and sent away and shut out, always with their noses pressed against the stained glass window. And you know what? That's not of God. That just isn't of God. That's not the God we serve. And so I say to you, now is the time to come back. Find you a church where the real spirit of the living God exists. That's where you need to be. It is here. Now is a time. As things are waking up from the pandemic, this is a time. It is the time there are folks who are doing the real work, the real work of Christ Jesus, who gave his life so that all men could be free. Black folks know the truth. Black folks know the real truth of liberation. And now is the time. That's the real truth of the matter. And so I give thanks unto God. That's my prayer. That's my prayer in earnest about what we should be doing in this celebration. And that's the real work of pride. That's the real work of LGBT pride this month. The work of restoration, reclamation, and joy and love, right? As we celebrate and move forward and we think about what we want to do with the future. All those who were sent away from the church I had a friend who um, told me a story when they called for prayer and she went down to the altar for prayer and they said, join hands. And an older a elder in the church looked at her and pulled her hand away. And she talked about how hurtful that was. And um, I say to her too, go back. Maybe not to that church, but find your church where you are loved. And the real work of the real, the real work, a place like perhaps the Proctor Family Conference, the real work of love is being done. It's there, the churches are there, black churches are there. And your gifts, your talents, your love for God, the one true living God, the God that was made manifest in the life of Christ Jesus can be used and you'll be appreciated. You will, be, you will find a place, there, will, there is a place for you. And so we give thanks today. We give thanks today for uh, Proctor. We give thanks today for Dr. Jeremiah Wright. I personally give thanks for Dr. Jeremiah Wright, for Dr. Reverend Dr. Um, Carruthers, and all of the folks connected to the Proctor Conference. I ask that God continues to give them the strength, the resources to continue the work they need, the strength, and the resources they need to do the work that they must do to carry on. I give thanks for them. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Receive our prayer, O oh God. Receive our prayer, O oh King. Sanctify our hearts today. Receive our praise. Receive our praise, O oh God. Receive our praise, O oh King. Sanctify our hearts today. Receive our prayer. If you can repeat that when we just say it with me, say, Receive our praise, 
O God, receive our praise, O King, sanctify our hearts today, receive our praise, O our praise, O oh God, receive our praise, O oh King, sanctify our hearts today, receive our praise. Receive our praise, receive our Let us just allow the powerful words of the refrain, receive our praise, receive our offering, receive that which we have lifted up today. Thank you so much, Reverend Danielle Defoe. Thank you so much, Reverend Austin. And let us, in the inspiration of our prayer today, be willing to give in support of the real work of pride, the work of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference, which can be understood as shared today by Reverend Danielle of Restoration, Reclamation, Joy, and Love be willing to support the work of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference by choosing to donate to the Legacy Fund. We know that the work has begun and we believe and can see that the work must continue for future generations. One of the ways that happens is through our generosity through our willingness to open our checkbooks or our cash apps, our PayPal's, and to click the donation link so that we might continue to financially support the work of the Samuel DeWitt Proctor Conference. We are grateful to you and we are grateful for you. As we find ourselves moving to the rest of our day, let us be reminded of the power of love as shared through the prayer today, that there is restoration upon us in our families, in our homes, and in our faith communities. Black and brown folks, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and queer folks, folks who were tossed out and forgotten whose noses were pressed against the stained glass window. Reverend Danielle has invited us and reminded us that there is greater acceptance to come. So come on back home, come on back where there is love being done because that's where real work happens. Come on back where there is restoration, reclamation, joy, and love. Let us not forget that love is not just the greatest commandment, but it is the ongoing work of restoration, of reclamation, of joy, and of our souls being pulled, pushed, tugged, and reminded of God's great and expansive love for all of us. Thank you so much, Reverend Danielle Defoe. Thank you so much, Reverend Alston. And as we have our sending forth on this morning, just a remembrance that we not only come to this moment 
in this present time, but we come from a lineage of justice workers, a lineage of people who are showing love, a lineage of liberation and of people who are seeking to do what God has required of us. And so let us take our place in the lineages of love and liberation that we might midwife God's future into the here and now, that our creator equips us the spirit sustains us and Christ will lead us with joy. Let us rise, let us love, and let us follow.